This is part two of my story of how I quit my job without a plan, without any idea of what was gonna happen next. Make sure if you missed the first part, you go check that out, I'll link it below. I've just shared the moment where the day I returned to work after having a couple days off for my grandmother's funeral, my boss let me go. And I was shocked. My boss said to me, you'll understand one day when you have your own business. Me? Have my own business? I had never considered that before. And I was also in this moment so mad at him for telling me that. I told him, I wanna work for you. I want this job. But obviously it was time for me to go. So I walk out of the office and from the parking lot, I called a former client who always used to tease me jokingly, but also kind of serious to call him if I ever wanted a better job is what he'd say. He also had an event company that worked with celebrities and performers. So I called him to say, hey, I'm available. And dang, I got lucky. He hired me on the spot. Boom, there's my hit of validation again. I've got my self-worth back. But the thing is, if you've watched part one, you've probably caught on by now. I was always chasing external validation. Do you think that's sustainable long-term? Do you think that that's a key to long-term success and happiness and fulfillment? What do you think is? Comment below. I loved my jobs. I was putting people on these stages and in the spotlight. I loved the hustle, the adrenaline, the important people that I got to meet. But I realize now, what was it all for? Did I even know what I wanted back then? I'm so glad that I had all of the experiences that I did because it helped me to find out what do I want and how did seeking external validation serve me and how can it serve you? Well, eventually this cycle continued. I found myself again in a role where I had no boundaries, zero boundaries, because I was so desperate for approval that I would work all hours, say yes to everything, basically allowed my employer to just completely walk all over me. It got to the point where my parents had like an intervention with me and said, you're not happy, you're not yourself. And if we have to support you financially to get yourself out of this, we will. And I was making really good money at that time, but I knew I couldn't afford to let go of this income. But I also knew that I couldn't afford to keep living this way. Have you ever had that? You know, I had some social media clients on the side, so I still had some revenue coming in, but I did it. I quit. I quit my job. I fired my clients that I hadn't set boundaries with and had unfortunately found myself in toxic relationships. And the next day, I left the country. I knew that I needed to take some time and space, and I chose to include real physical space between myself and my typical environment for introspection so I could really recognize what was going on that got me to where I was. I remember it took me a while to get myself out of my regular routines and thought patterns. Like for example, the moment I'd wake up, I would grab my phone expecting 911 messages and fires to put out. Have you ever had that feeling? Waking up with anxiety, expecting something to be wrong? So I didn't know what my plan was, but I needed a fresh start. The amazing thing is that when I took that space to reflect and grow and heal, and as I started to shift in my mindset, things, externally shifted pretty quickly as well. It's almost as if the space that I created by firing those clients and letting go of the opportunities that were not healthy for me created space for a new standard that I set for myself. So this is something that I really hope you're hearing because I had a pattern of jobs where I was desperate for my self-worth and approval and found myself in these just devastating, heartbreaking situations, but then I would go into the exact same circumstances with just a new job or a new person or a new relationship. You might see this sometimes in, in the movies or with friends that they keep dating the wrong guys or they keep falling into this. It's like you have to get the lesson and finally get the lesson before they stop giving it to you. Coincidences, introductions, things just started falling into place. I got a brand new client that paid me more than several of the clients that I had fired combined. And even though I made such drastic changes in such a short time, I ended up that next month making more money than what I was making before. So when every job didn't work out, it pushed me to find solutions. I had to get the lesson many times before I finally got it. I needed to find the right balance of security and fulfillment. And for me, that fulfillment, I had no idea at the time, came from creativity. Look how in every job that I had, I was creating platforms and stages and content and monetization for other people. And there's nothing wrong with that. As long as you can still generate that self-worth internally. 
and that your happiness and identity isn't wrapped up in something outside yourself. And when I realized that, it also allowed me to give more and serve better to the people outside of myself without attachment to needing their approval and with authenticity and charisma because of the intention behind it. How many of you have had expectations or experiences that when they didn't work out, you were disappointed? Maybe even devastated. You know, everyone has that, right? And then days or weeks or months or even years later, do you ever connect the dots backwards thinking, I'm so glad that didn't work out. Like maybe you didn't get the job you were hoping for, but then you ended up getting a better one. Or maybe you started your own business and became an entrepreneur. Now I can look back on that and say, I'm so glad I got fired from that job. I'm so glad I had my heart broken. I'm so glad my boss planted that seed for me saying that I'd understand one day when I had my own business. And now we're here. We adapt, it becomes our stories. We turn our mess into our message. Entrepreneurship is a game of personal development and authenticity comes from knowing who you are. Charisma comes from knowing who you are. By playing that game of personal development, I learned that I'm an entrepreneur and I'm capable of evolving into who I'm meant to be so that I can reach who I'm meant to reach and because my stories and my content and then my cash flow, my success in my business is also evolving at the same rate. If you think of it from a, an outside perspective, like why do we love movies? We follow along with the hero, the main character, the protagonist, and we watch them as they fight the villain. We watch them hit rock bottom. We watch their external struggle with their confidence or their fears, and then we get to see them rise up. And when they reach their happily ever after, whether that's winning the race or getting the girl or landing the dream job, we cheer louder when they win because we got to witness the whole journey. We sat on the edge of our seats when they hit rock bottom, our hearts were aching when they almost gave up, but when they made it, their wins feel like our wins too because we got to be a part of it. So I didn't realize back then that I could have an audience that I bring along with me on this exact journey that I'm taking you on in this channel. So I hope that as you continue to watch these episodes that you become fully confident in the fact that your obstacles can become your opportunities, that your mess can be your message. And as the attractive character, you can bring your audience along this story with you as the protagonist and give them a front row seat to watch. So the big lesson that I learned after quitting my job without a plan is I stopped having these toxic people in my life because I stopped being the person that attracted that and the opportunities and the patterns of behaviors and opportunities and circumstances that brought me to continue experiencing and finally learning that lesson. Your business will only grow to the level that you do. And my mentor, Alex Sharfin always says, if you don't have the business you want, it's because you haven't become the person who can run it yet. So one of the things that I do for my clients is I teach them the marketing campaigns, the content to create that can sell your products at high ticket prices and on repeat to grow your business to seven figures and beyond. But you also have to become the person who can run that business. And I, and I wanna give you the keys to show you how. So if you're ready to create new possibilities in your business, I wanna see you at my next free private training. I'll give you access to my highest performing, most revenue generating campaigns that you can actually plug and play into your business to maximize lead generation and sales. So click the link in the description below to attend my next free private training where I'll be showing you exactly how to ascend leads from hello to high ticket. But I've just shared the moment that, what am I saying? And I was shocked. I, and I was, Shocked. And what does that say? And, and heal. And heal. Okay. Created space for a new standard that I set for my success. Whoops. So this is something that I really hope you're hearing because look at. It pushed me to find the solutions. I had to get. I had to get the. Um, woo. Yeah, yeah. That was a long one.